Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a List on KPCA LP 103.3 FM and online at kpca.fm. Each week, we choose a topic related to movies, music, video games, books, television, make lists, and discuss our picks. Um, if you want to get involved, you can always tweet us at Phil and Ariel or go on to our Instagram, which is Phil and Ariel. Or send us an email, which is philandariel at gmail.com. <laughs> uh, today, I have a very special guest. Who is it? The special guest is someone that you know. I'm mm-hmm. just pointing to you, our Whoa. guest. It's Ariel. Hey. Hey, welcome to the show. It's me again. Hey, thank you for uh, for being on the, on the show again. Appreciate it. Thank you it. very much for having me again. Anytime. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Um, even when we're not doing the show, if you oh. want to just come to the station and uh, sit down in the guest seat, I'm sure everyone will be okay with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we haven't gotten to it yet because we just did the intro. We just did the intro, but we're going to be talking about movies that make us want to travel to specific places we haven't been to before. Such a good topic. Because we like movies and we like travel and we like places. Thank you. It's um, one of our big things, yeah. But before that... Like always, we have to talk about serious business. Uh-oh. So you know how it's towards the end of the year, so people are starting to release their best of the year lists and their um, don't sneeze on the radio. <laughs> Thank you for holding it. No. <laughs> um, and and their then award shows are starting to release their nominees for uh-huh. best of the year. Yeah. This is, I guess, this is a pet peeve. I'm always looking for pet peeves of mine. I think this is one. I'm always looking for because pet I'm peeves like, of yeah, mine. because I, I constantly <laughs> think of, I constantly go like, is that a pet peeve? No, that's just something that should annoy me, and it does. Well, maybe I feel like this should annoy me. I don't know. Pet peeves and me they have a weird relationship, but um, <laughs> just by by virtue of the fact alone that you sit and go through your mental laundry <laughs> and like pick out the dirtiest bits to go, yep, that's a pet peeve. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. I get annoyed when people release their best of lists when there's still like a month left of mm. the year, pretty much. Yeah. Like you can do it, let's say like the last week of December. That's fine. Because yeah. let's say the last week you're busy, you're not going to watch any more movies or read any more books or mm-hmm. listen to any more music. That's fine. But right now there's like next week, Star Wars comes out. That's mm-hmm. big. I'm, I think that's we'll going to make quite a few people the last list. two star wars lists i mean star wars lists. last two star wars movies are my favorite of each year mm-hmm. um and new eminem albums comes comes out in a week mm-hmm. uh disaster artist just came out I haven't a chance to see that Ooh, yet that's right that's out yeah Phil, aren't you or excited I think it, yeah it just came out or it's about to come out salute to tommy Wizzo. oh yeah hello tommy uh, um <laughs> Uh, we are recording this not the station at the moment. This I know is we're ahead of time, so yeah, we're in a personal a studio. Giant uh, poster of a drawing of Tommy Wiseau mm-hmm. signed by Greg Sestero from yep. the room, and the Who writer the of the Disaster Artist, <laughs> of which this is a poster. Yep. Um. So now Harold just can't look away. Oh God. Uh, I mean, it's just. Uh. <laughs> um. <laughs> so. The, the, so what I do is I still, when the major award shows release the nominees and stuff, I still go look. Mm-hmm. I know like a lot, okay, a lot of the award shows, their their cutoff is different. So if they release nominees now, mm-hmm. then next year, I think things that can come out in December count. So that's fine. But when people do their, their best of the year lists, like websites and Yeah, before stuff, the year's over. I mean, so it like, makes sense on. to do it like December 29th yeah because people because nothing's gonna come out and i know that yeah, after that people are constantly it's kind of like how people celebrate holidays before the holiday now mm-hmm. like it's the weekend before is when they celebrate Ooh. for like if we're gonna talk about pet peeves that's a pet peeve <laughs> for me Ooh. especially halloween Ooh. uh you know how people celebrate that's the main one. <laughs> christmas from august yeah onwards is obscene yep. st patrick's day the, oh. the weekend before no, all those you celebrate it on the day exactly like if you're gonna extend it for a couple of days fine extend it so that you can can like have your kids go trick-or-treat that's fine i get it Mm -hmm. but don't just not do the thing on the day because then that means that that day doesn't mean anything anymore like just 
make it so that Halloween is the fourth, like the third Saturday of every October instead of making it the 31st. Mm -hmm. If that's so important to you. Because way back when, when we were kids, when we used to walk backwards in the snow, we would go trick-or-treating on the night, regardless whether or not it was a school night. It was kind of like an awesome thing it, yeah it was better on those days because it made that school day better it made that school day better because the schools would get decorated um it felt really inclusive because everybody was involved and halloween's one of those holidays that's just super fun because it's not religiously based yep. unless you're pagan but like it's not something that would divide people because of belief um it's it's just fun it's based on something that was religious and Mm -hmm. spiritual but it's just it's about kids getting into fancy costumes and going out and trick-or-treating and having fun with their friends which is like the best basis for holiday ever especially when you're a kid yeah so don't take that away from people and i was just gonna say dentists it's okay dentists hate it that's understandable yeah i'm like wait but no dentists and the bad dentists want your teeth to be bad, so they they, yeah. they go, oh great! So they like in a few a yeah. few months after that, everyone's gonna have cavities. Exactly, we're gonna be overloaded. So with... they're gonna pay for their trip to Hawaii that year. Yeah, yeah. No, it's I don't know. It's it, that's a pet peeve. Derailed. Yep. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's worth mentioning. I think I gripe about that mm-hmm. every single year. Um. So the, the the reason why this is in my mind now, mm-hmm. besides just every day I look in their new list, but is the critics something awards i don't remember some choice probably mm-hmm. and they they have a bunch of categories and they have ones for different genres mm-hmm. they had best action movie and john wick 2 wasn't on there so i was uh-huh. like what and then john wick 2 came out came out this year came out yeah like february i think either january or february might have had it was an amazing movie safe. that is my favorite action movie of all time it's going to be on my best of the year list and yeah. they had a genre for action movies and John Wick 2 wasn't on it, and it made me go, come on. <laughs> so, I don't trust your judgment, critics. Yeah. All of them. So take that, critics. And critics liked that movie, too. Yeah, because it was a good movie. It was really good. Um, <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> we're here to talk about different movies. Yep. Um, trying to think of if there's anything else I want to talk about before we get into our lists. Anything important that needs to be mentioned? Uh, rumors, Quentin Tarantino doing a Burn. star trek movie quentin tarantino doing a star trek movie mm. i would love to see that yeah when you mentioned that last night that blew the eyebrows off my face mm-hmm. that was just a weird idea that's kind of like um david lynch doing one of those giant franchises mm-hmm. he did dune and which makes people said it was not great oh it was not great but you know who's doing they're gonna Dune again, you know who's doing it? Who? Uh, Dennis Villanueva, is that how you say? is the director who did uh, New Blade Runner and Arrival, Ooh. Sicario, yeah. He's exactly who needs to be directing yeah. that movie. I read the first book. Maybe I read a sequel, because I know that there are like 30 million books in that series that I think were continued by the original oh. author's son. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's still Dune books coming out, but there's just like a ton of them. But I read the first one and that's, it was really cool. It was really weird. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't read it, but I um I saw a movie, I can't, can't pronounce the name, documentary about a guy who was trying to make Dune a while oh, ago. Oh, right, yeah. And then it wasn't made. Um, it sounded like a very interesting documentary. It was good. Yeah. I recommend it. This movie that I can't remember the name of. Well, I, I, even if I remembered it, I couldn't. That's my thing. If I can't pronounce something even in my mm-hmm. head, then I, I can't remember it. Yeah. It's like jo- Jaworski, something like that. Mm. Mm. Um, I'll let you guys look it up. <laughs> um, if you don't have the internet, go to the library. Free internet there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, libraries are great. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, this is my problem with libraries. Now. Um, oh. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Wait, what was I going to say? Uh, know, there was something There was something itching your mustache. Bummer. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. Okay. Should we get to our list? To the subject at hand. Yes, please. Subject at hand. So, we're, um, yeah, we're going to talk about movies that make us want to visit and travel to certain places. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tried to pick ones that places, specific places we haven't been to yet. Um, it was a little more difficult than I thought. This is really difficult because you and I love traveling and we love traveling mm-hmm. to places that we haven't been. We love traveling to places we've been before, mm-hmm. but that's always been 
a thing that we've done together is travel. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, and we even make day trips locally so that we can go to little towns that we just have never been to before yeah. that are like <laughs> basically a gas station and just people who live yeah. around there. And we're like, yay, we've seen it. This is awesome. Um, yeah. I was surprised when I was looking at this movie. Seen. I was, it was surprised to see how many movies we've actually gone to those locations from a lot of them are near la so it's pretty easy yeah. but <laughs> it, yeah um one this is kind of a cheat not really but some of the places i kind of like seeing the movies only part of why i want to go <laughs> there, mm-hmm. there are things where i've seen other things that oh yeah that also contribute yeah. to it but it's yeah. it's something that either like for me the things on these lists have either made me want to go there more Yep. Because there's the memory of the movie and like the world that that movie is supposed to be telling a story about. Um, and other things too that make me want to go to that yeah. place. <laughs> I think, yeah, if, if if the places are lit and shot well. If they're then... lit, fam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, I was tr- going to try to d- c- give more. Wait, what's the word? I was going to try to say words like that, too, but I couldn't think of any <laughs> that weren't just bad words. Um, uh, if they're shot and lit well, like if the cinematography is yeah, really good. Yeah, then it makes me want to go. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Which um, is something that we will be discussing specifically. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you have yours in order? Or no? uh, my order, I think, is going to be a little bit improvised because it's kind of hard to put them in order. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to like force myself. Yeah, that's fine. Do you want to save your, your rest for last? Do you think if my, the, my rest for your, last. your best to your rest? Yeah, I think your dream travel destination. I think I will. All right, cool. Okay. So start with the last one. I hope that we have some listeners that own hotels and airlines. <laughs> Cause they'll be like, Oh, they want to go love there. our this show so nothing. much yep. that they would want to donate all travel, <laughs> like all of it. Yep. And we would accept we really would. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you want to go first? Thank you. That's very generous of you. I would <laughs> love welcome. to. Um, my list is being wonky. Okay, there we go. Um, my number... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 11. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I lumped them into so, location, which is why my numbers got all wonky. All right, cool. I have, I think, 10. So, yeah, we can just do all of them. Cool. Um Oh, by the way, you're going to hear our roommates Yeah, on this podcast. And our roommates are named Aida and Chloe, and they are um, four-legged furry cats. Oh, that's not your drink, buddy. Because <laughs> we are both um, cat ladies. So this is a very casual let's yeah. make a list. <laughs> yeah. There's drinks involved. <laughs> um, but yes, so my number 11 is... Ooh, this is so hard. <sighs> leap year okay never mind it's actually very easy <laughs> wait leap year leap year which is, is that a, romantic comedy yes it's me, like a really I, I like, silly romantic comedy i like to to if i'm not quite sure what it is i like to to guess and see well you like to guess am. things and make lists that's yep. weird is that is leap year with amy adams yes and it's a romantic comedy and yes who's the guy is it is it josh Dumail or something like that no oh, okay he's an ooh, he's a british actor I think his name is Matt something or Matthew something. Matt Smith from Doctor Who. Um, he's going to be in a series that the BBC is making based on a series of books that I just finished rereading. Okay. About vampires and witches. Ooh. Ooh. Um, uh, so this is showing a side of me that I never thought I would show on KPCA. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Leap Year takes place in Ireland. Oh, do you know what? I mean, it crosses the pond okay. because Amy Adams is um from the u.s and she the whole plot it's so dumb <laughs> she take a leap over the pond it's every like somebody in the u.s tells her that it's oh her dad who is a funny alcoholic <laughs> um tells her that it's a tradition in this place in ireland that every leap year women ask men to marry them so she decides to do that adam scott plays her fiance. Oh, okay. And he's a real terrible guy. <laughs> um, like he's not awful. He's just not great. Uh, so she decides to to surprise him and ask him to marry her, and uh, she gets lost on the way, and everything goes wrong. And she hires a guy who works at a bar to drive her 
from one place to another mm. and it's they fall in love on the way That's spoilers so sweet. but like every shot it's so sweet just a two hour long <laughs> cheating end movie of a relationship <laughs> yes the, yep it really is and um but it's just it takes place in ireland and ireland is one of the most gorgeous places i've ever seen i've seen a tiny tiny bit of it in life and just every picture it's just so gorgeous is it is a lot of it take place like out in the countryside kind of they're on a road trip so yeah oh, okay. it's like in the countryside of, yeah. and so you see a lot of like you see the cliffs of moor or moor mordor <laughs> at some point and i mean it just it looks gorgeous because we've seen dublin and cork yes which were great and on cork Cove. was was more was less with cork was less urban yes and stuff, um, but, uh, there was just like the little Cork, there was like a little downtown where we caught the bus. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we went to uh, the uh, castle. What's yeah. It um, it's Blarney. Blarney, <laughs> Blarney Castle. Yeah, which, which by the way, was like walking onto a movie set where people are on a crane with lights. Yep. Like everything was perfect. <laughs> we walked down this the little tiny. The weather was perfect there too. It was perfect. Bit. We walked down this little curvy street in this sleepy little town. Every time we travel somewhere. No one is ever outside. It's like we pick the best times. It's like some sort of holiday that nobody told us about, except for Disneyland. Except for Disneyland. <laughs> but like we always go, and there's just nobody there except for the people that live there. And mm-hmm. they're like, "Ah, oh, hey." <laughs> we're like, "Hey, this is a really cool place to live." And they're like, "Yeah, thanks. Get out." <laughs> um, but we just walk down, and it's a tourist trap, but the best tourist trap I've ever been to in my yeah. life, where there's a little gift shop. And you think like, oh, so it's probably going to be like a tiny little place with like a stone that you guys. But then you walk through the gift shop and it's like in um, Dorothy and Toto. What's that movie? The Wizard of Oz. When it turns into color, it's like somebody pulls back a screen and everything's just showered in glitter. I mean, there were open flowers everywhere. There was like a babbling brook. There was a guy (laughs) playing a harp. So it sounded like... A movie soundtrack had kicked in. It was a, it was like a actual big harp. It wasn't one of those like Toys yeah, R Us harps. It was a giant harp. It was magical. So yeah. Ireland to me is one of the most magical yeah. places. So, so that yeah. that movie made you want to go see more of Ireland. Yes. And everything else you see about Ireland makes you most, want to see more of Ireland. Too. Most specifically, it made me want to take a road trip in Ireland. That's good, yeah. Um, because there are some like really tiny, curvy, little mm-hmm. roads where the could be really hair raising at times, but it just looked. So beautiful. We should both get in really good shape. Then we take a bike trip. Around yes. Ireland. And movies always have people getting really mad when sheep or cow, oh, yeah. like cattle block up a road. I'm like, excuse to like sit down and yeah. enjoy the moment. <laughs> Why are you getting mad, mm-hmm. bruh? It's lit, fam. <laughs> Philip Lehman Brown. I'm quoting him directly. Yep. Forever. I'm so sorry if I'm shouting into the mic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, half the episode is is me talking about one one of my choices. <laughs> I like it, yeah, and it's um, the worst choice. <laughs> I couldn't think of any movies I've seen that take place in Ireland that, that I've seen. Mm-hmm. I, I've mo- a lot in the UK, a lot in yeah Scotland, and well, I'm sure in, I'm sure that there's England. stuff like for the BBC that's been filmed in Ireland, yeah, and different movies that take place in England that have been filmed in Ireland because they kind of want to like. Mm maybe oh i think black sheep not the chris farley one but there's a uh, horror comedy where the sheep mm. start killing people oh fun i think it was <laughs> ireland it might have been scotland though uh. yeah. um nice good choice thank you oh yeah uh my number whatever uh i don't know let me see how many i have two three four five i have ten my number ten i'm gonna say night watch Oh, that's a good one. Moscow. Love it's Moscow, mm-hmm. Russia. I like the way the movie was shot. Uh, that's I'm going to say that about all these movies probably. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there, there's, this is going to sound dumb, but there's a lot of scenes where they're driving around at night and the way the city looks at night lit up mm-hmm. is uh, pretty awesome. And it just is, just you get, I, I've seen more now, but especially when that came out, like, 10, 12 years ago or something mm-hmm. like that, I rarely saw movies that weren't American. Right. So whenever you see movies that take place somewhere else and it's another language. You mean we're not you... American, yeah. Oh, yeah. What'd I say? No, no. no you, oh, s- okay. you said weren't. It just, I think the word oh, yeah. might have gotten a little bit swallowed. Um, so here I am. Every once in a while, I just day. see, it's a, um, you know, movie that yeah. takes place in another place, different culture, 
all that stuff even though it's a movie about vampires and people getting I killed mean, and stuff. we can look past that right yeah. <laughs> also eastern european fairy tales which is kind of what some of that movie feels like uh-huh. because they're like secret councils of other supernatural creatures yeah. and things. Those fairy tales are rough. Yeah. <laughs> They're dark, which is very fitting. Uh, who does, who's who are the people that did, a, is it his brother's Grimm? Yes. And then who are the other people that did a bunch of the fairy tales that a bunch of like Disney movies are based on? Uh, is something Anderson or something? Hans Christian Anderson yeah. is one guy. Where's he? Oh, sorry. Where's he from? He's from Sweden. Okay. Is that right? And uh, Brothers Grimm. Sweden or Denmark. Where Brothers Grimm of, I want to say that they're Germanic. Okay. So it's not really Eastern European area. No, but I think that they borrowed from. Right, right. That was just a lot of stuff that came. I think the they traveled to like go right down fairy tales. Um, yeah. Fairy tales. <laughs> um, yeah. So that movie, it's kind of like a fairy tale. Nice. But yeah, it just was like, oh, this is what Russia is, you know, parts of Russia are like. Yeah. Somewhat, um, even though it's a fantasy action movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still just like, oh, yeah, I, I, I want to walk around there. It looks cool. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool architecture yeah. in Russia, too. Okay. My next choice is, well, I think I'm going to do two at once. <laughs> it's actually it's allowed. The... Okay. <laughs> it's, it's actually allowed. thank you. Cool. And it's actually in the same place that I just said, <laughs> Ireland again, but different parts of Ireland. Okay. So High Spirits and S- The Secret of Ronan ish. Um High Spirits kind of makes me want to see the same things that Leap Year does, which are country mm-hmm. and castles. All right, castles m- more specifically. Um, but the secret of Roninish makes me want to see the coast and little islands and like fishing villages um, and things like that. Was, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I totally get that. High spirits is mostly in the castle, right? Or is it a hotel? It's a castle. It's a castle that's, that made, that into they, a that's made into a hotel. Um, uh, I don't know. What's the other movie? I'm sorry. The Secret of Ronan Inish. I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. I may have made you watch some of it and you may have fallen asleep. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, if we go to Ireland, I, I won't I fall asleep. Hold it against I mean, you when 100%. we go to Ireland again, I won't fall asleep. I'm super bitter about it, but it's okay. I <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I have one that, that's kind of around the same place that's next. Oh. Skyfall. Yes, that's on my list. Towards, as, towards the end when he goes to yeah. Skyfall, I think uh-huh. is what the place is called. Is it? Because I know that it's in Scotland i was just reading and it they said scottish uh like highlands right in the highlands which is where balmoral is okay which is um a palace that i i don't know that it was built for queen victoria but queen victoria loved spending time in balmoral especially after prince albert died and um i don't remember if in the movie that they say something about it being near balmoral but for some reason like, okay, yeah, in I don't my remember. head those two are connected but um yeah no that looked so cool in yeah. the movie. And the Highlands. Yeah, you only see a little part, but it's like, oh, I want to go take a vacation yeah. in a place like that. It looks so amazing. Um, we should just uh, travel around the world. Yeah, and, sure. And yeah, just travel every, visit every castle. You know how people Come visit on, all kitties. the ballparks in the US? Yeah, we'll just, just go to every <laughs> castle in the should, world. You know how people have like national park stamp books? Yeah. We should make that, but just for all the castles. Yep. But we never have like any information beyond like 10 castles yeah. because we just don't know any more than that. We've been to Castle in the Air in uh, Berkeley. Yes, That's we have. That's Mark 1. Mm-hmm. Blarney. <laughs> Been to some other ones. Disneyland. Kensington. Buckingham. Dublin Castle. Hampton. This is good. Well, we, we, we just keep going. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's on my list. Yeah. It's on my list, too. And it's um, coming wait, up. Do, wait, did you have Skyfall on your list or mm-hmm. not? Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I said it like three times. No, you were saying I was saying talking that over you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why are you sorry? Because I didn't hear you. I'm being rude at you. Oh, boy. <laughs> in your face. Um, what? Uh, what's the, the next one on your list? Well, my brain's like, do it geographically. No. Eh. Don't do it geographically. That's dumb. Okay, what's next on my list is... Should we keep doing them individually, or should I lump a couple of them together? 
I'm cool with you lumping together if it's like so, in the same area. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm fine okay. With that. That's how I have my list here instructed. Cool. I think it's a good idea. Um, so France. What? France. France. Uh, Let and, me guess. Mm-hmm. Amelie? Yes. And forget Paris. <laughs> <laughs> no. American Werewolf in Paris. No. Uh, obviously, the other movie is Moulin Rouge. <laughs> Mm, no. All right. I give up. Chocolat. Ah, I haven't seen it. So Chocolat takes place in a smaller French village and Amelie takes place in all parts of it. She goes and visits like a smaller place, but I think she's in a bigger city. I don't know if it's Paris or not, but um, yeah, France just seems awesome. And we went to Paris for a single day and it was one of the most stressful days traveling. <laughs> we've ever experienced Stress, yeah it's definitely a stressful few hours <laughs> yes um well i mean it was kind of a little bit cursed as soon as we got onto the bullet train from london and an american with a louis vuitton bag rolled it over my foot and uh, never looked back and didn't care like pushed me out of the way and rolled that thing over my foot i felt like my foot was chopped off i was just like great i really hope that people don't see us this way yeah. and later in the day somebody did yeah <laughs> for sure at a best western in paris <laughs> yep. and then the, on the train ride back didn't weren't there the other americans that were causing an issue on it the was train? the same woman or was it the same people it was the same <laughs> woman yeah uh, I, I didn't i, I didn't know, so. kid you not same woman oh wait no i'm i'm mixing up things <laughs> she did that when we were getting on the train oh, okay so it wasn't the beginning of the day the beginning of the day actually wasn't that bad except I'm, that we had to wake up at like 4 a.m <laughs> yeah like on the way back i think there are people that this is probably not, not interesting but people who i'm gonna say it anyway people who someone like wanted to change seats with somebody it was one woman yeah and then the woman who rolled she, over my foot wait on the way back yeah so what i said oh, okay what i said was that i was oh, wrong both things on the way back Sorry, please continue. <laughs> what I said was that I was wrong with what I said. Okay. That she didn't do that on the way to Paris. She did that on the way to the train when we were leaving Paris. Okay, there we go. Yep. And so it was her that caused the kerfuffle I, yep, in our I car. And she had already driven over my foot with her suitcase. Yeah. So I was like, this doesn't bode well. Yep. Um, which was at the end of the day when it was like, all I wanted to do was curl up into a shame ball. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, um, Americans... In Paris. <laughs> Not a great combo. She, yeah, sorry. Continue telling the story of what happened. It was ridiculous. Oh, no. It, that, that was pretty much it. And, then, it was like, and then, then people that worked on the train had to come and talk to people. And they were just, they were loudly complaining. I like that you're saying they. It was one individual. Was it, was it with her no, friends? No, it was, it was just one woman. It was just her. I thought she was with friends and she was complaining to the no, friends. No, it was just her. Oh, okay. And she was complaining to strangers. Oh, okay. She wanted, so what you have to do in Europe for trains and long distance travel i don't know if it's like general but what we experienced when we have traveled long distance in europe is that you have to reserve a seat and you know you get a ticket with that number and you sit there it's like an airplane Mm -hmm. and it's not like riding the bart in san francisco you have to be specific because that makes perfect sense well a guy had paid for the seats in like a four seat table Mm -hmm. so he'd bought it out for himself so that he could do work on the train and the ride is like what an hour and a half or something yeah not very long and uh and so it's like long enough that if you want to get work done right you can get work done so she had paid for a seat but she decided that she wanted to sit somewhere else (laughs) and instead of saying hi is this seat free and may i sit here she went hey can i just have this you know like oh my god it was like watching a reality tv star just like bumble around life it was ridiculous she was just so rude and like i don't even know that she said hey can i have this she was like i want to sit here so can Mm -hmm. you move to my seat and i'll sit here and he was like um no and it was he said that because of how rude she was okay and we were sitting right across the aisle from him and like one table back and so we got front seats to watch this happen and she looked around the car like she escalated it she had a perfectly large comfortable seat but she escalated it and she referred to like every individual in the train car yeah can you believe this he won't let me have what i want and he was like uh i'm gonna mind my own business and i'm gonna keep working he was like i paid for this so no and um not if you're gonna be like that american (laughs) and he was like yeah i don't blame you man and so she went and got the train conductors who were responsible for that car and complained and complained and complained 
And they came to talk to him and they were like, hey, like because she had presented it as if he had attacked her. And he was like, I paid for this and I don't want to sit with this person because she seems like a nightmare. And they were like, oh, yeah, no, we don't blame you. <laughs> and it, and like it was just ridiculous. It was this huge drama and I was living for it. I, they, it. I remember they stopped the train mm-hmm. and the pilot went walked all the way down to the opposite side of the train mm-hmm. then drove it reverse back to Paris yep. and then they got there and they kicked her out yep and they were like not you honey yeah and then they sped up triple speed to get back to London with everybody else they're like we're so sorry that we took up your time here's a croissant and a baguette for everyone have fun <laughs> no okay boy this is digressing <laughs> um Sorry, because that's my no, fault. Okay. What <laughs> about what in those movies made you want to go to make makes make France so appealing? Okay, so chocolat has to do with chocolate mm-hmm. and French food combined with chocolate, and just the small town that it takes place in is gorgeous. It's one of those movies about like, oh, our lives are so boring, and it's like you live in one of the most amazing uh-huh. places. I'm so sorry for you, not. And then um, Amelie. There's a scene where Amelie and her new boyfriend are riding around on a scooter around town, which is like a feeling that would be really fun to have. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of different locations and train stations that looked really cool. So it was just like an urban French area that seemed like it would be really cool to walk around and experience. Yeah. I'm so sorry that I'm dominating this. No, you're not at all. Uh, Not at all. What's next on yours? Cool. Um, my next one is Willy Wonka makes me want to go to Germany because they filmed a lot of it in Munich and uh, I don't know where they filmed the stuff inside the factory but I'm not expecting to be able to go into the factory because that is you have to win a gold ticket to go in there um, and you have to be a child <laughs> yeah you have to live in a fantasy world too <laughs> yes. um, but uh, just the, the scenes before they go in the factory and stuff just walking around Germany it's like oh this place is is different, kind of creepy, mm-hmm. just the way they shoot it. Um, and even though they show, like, a lot of it's kind of like the the poorer working class mm-hmm. people, it's still just that neighborhood, just like, oh, this seems lively mm-hmm. and, uh, and fun and different. Yeah, very good so, one. Uh, so that's, that, that's what I picked. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I have any more that are right around there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. What do you got next? Next on my list is Scotland. And this is Skyfall. Skyfall. And Braveheart. Braveheart. <laughs> um, Not a historically accurate movie. <laughs> I think uh, Braveheart. Um, never mind. I was going to. I think one of the, the castles they used in there. It's not actually in Scotland. Oh, I believe that. I'm sure that like yeah. things are all over the place. But like the idea of Scotland right, right, was right. like seated in my head yeah. when I saw that. And I was like, I got to go there because I grew up in an Irish Catholic school mm-hmm. that was a <laughs> parochial school that was very, very small. And like it, we were, we were all so proud of our Irish heritage. I have maybe half of a percent of of Irish nationality in my bloodline. And I was like, uh, Ireland and Scotland are the lands of my people. <laughs> They're not, <laughs> not at all. And, um, but just the idea of a place that had the visuals that Skyfall mm. provided, um, for Scotland was just amazing to imagine because yep. growing up near the Marin headlands, um, I've met people who grew up and lived in Ireland and said that the Marin Headlands is actually very close to what a lot oh, of cool. Ireland looks like. And so I was like, what? <laughs> There's a place where the whole country is like this. There's uh, the Bay Area and then kind of Western Europe and Mediterranean. There are lots of similarities. Yeah. Our, there are crazy similarities. Yeah. Which is awesome because you yep. can go to a place and feel a little bit of a connection mm-hmm. instead of feeling so completely out to sea. Yep. But yeah, that's my that's my next chunk. Good chunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll do another one then. That's fine. This is uh, the aforementioned. That's the word I've used on at least two of our episodes of the show. Nice. Uh, John Wick two. Go to mm-hmm. Rome. Yeah. Parts Ooh, of Rome. Their I, version of Rome is intense. Yeah, because the, there's parts here. One of the things I think it's there's a big fight scene on on one the of the streets of Rome, like at night. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure that, that was <laughs> Rome. It makes me want to go to Rome because I know other parts. Is of the it movie the one with Rome. the steps where what? they fall where they fall down the steps? Yeah, yeah. And this is one of the thing. There are a couple of reasons why I like this so much. First, like I said, all of them, the way the movie's shot, the way it's lit, it's just gorgeous. And then architecture in that area is great. Mm -hmm. And also, because if they filmed it and it's supposed to be middle of night, the streets are like totally empty. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's the way to do it. (laughs) You get to go just take your time walking down these streets and seeing these these amazing buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just felt comfortable. And then they they, they go to a really nice hotel (laughs) that is, in a way, one of the safest hotels Mm -hmm. um, in the world. It Not in a way, it is. It is. Yeah, That's unless true. you like well, trip and fall and break your see, own self. Unless in both movies, you've there were some very violent things that happened in the true. hotel. Like if people um, break the rules, supposed yeah. to be the, the safest hotel. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I this one of those places. Where it's like, oh, I I, I want to put on a sweater, mm-hmm. go walk around the street with like hot cider, and just walk around. And at the end, just go to my hotel room. And I want to walk around the streets. <laughs> with wine <laughs> oh yeah a bottle of <laughs> and glasses in hand <laughs> just share it what you know? kind hmm? what, oh sorry no no, no. uh what's that show um that was i'll have what's i'll have what phil's having with um phil rosenthal rosenthal yeah who is the creator of everyone, everyone loves, loves raymond. raymond yeah um that show is amazing uh but he goes to italy in one episode and i don't remember what city it is but the idea of a place that's warm enough that you can just have these like amazing gardens on the roof of where you live with like uh-huh. lemon trees and just all these amazing things. And then because he, he goes and he eats internationally and mm-hmm. he goes to Italy and he hangs out with this man who owns a restaurant and he eats in the restaurant and of course like cries because food makes him so happy. <laughs> but um, the restaurant seemed crazy because the culture of eating is so different in different parts of the world. And in that restaurant, I feel like it was, you go there, you eat what they make for you. Like, yeah. this is what we're making today. This is what people are yeah, having. this is what's fresh. This is what we Yeah, got. and then, like, just, there's, it's loud, but, like, good loud, where people are happy and people are invested in what they're doing. And, like, it just seemed like a really cool place to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree completely. Hijacked your list. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, there was something about, real quick, something about Rome. So I'm dry, walking around drinking. What was it, Belgium, where they had vending machines at like the train station or bus station with alcohol? Yes. Yeah. And that was when I like, looked at my phone. I was like, well, you can tr- just yeah. walk around and drink. We were if I knew that when we got there, I probably would have gotten one drink just to yeah. do it. But then I would have been nervous the whole time. Like, I don't know if this is actually illegal. Um, cool. All right. Uh, what's your next? Ooh. We should probably go a little faster. So yes. I'm, I'm no worries. I'm stretching okay. things out so, too much. Um, I'll do two things at once that are two different places cool. because I'll have more to talk about for the last one. Okay. So um, these two are any Pride and Prejudice, any Jane Austen. I should have said that in the reverse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but any Jane Austen thing mm-hmm. that takes place in England because, or any um, Bronte thing that happens in England. Uh, because there's like the moors there's all these different grassy fields that go forever these sprawling country estates and like bath and which we have gone to bath which mm-hmm. was awesome and i will never forget it um, yeah it was really it was amazing. amazing yeah again a city where we walked in and it was completely deserted and then we turned a couple corners and there were people yep. like it just it, we we know how to we know how to ghost travel mm-hmm. but um yeah just any Jane Austen y kind of thing, any costume drama really makes me want to go to England. Right there, yep. Anywhere in England. I'll go anywhere. I'll go to the country. I'll go to urban cities. Like, I'll go anywhere because it's just, I am an Anglophile. Same here. End of story. Yep. Um, uh, the second part of that is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which um, got panned. Oh, is it the Ben Stiller one? Yeah. People complained about that movie. I thought that it was a really sweet story and it was about a man who basically like lives in his head and then he doesn't. Yeah. As we started, there's one thing I read. Someone said that made me go like, oh, I see that. It was basically, they said that it's basically a movie, Ben still going, look at how cool I am. Uh, <laughs> look at all these things I can do. Yeah. And it's like, I get that some, but it's like, he's an well, actor. He's He wants to I entertain. Mean, that's, that's fine. If you look at a thing with a jaded attitude, you're going to be jaded about yeah. it and you'll probably have a legit point. 
Um, but at the same time, it's like that's what all entertainment is, is someone yeah. going, I have something that is I want to share with you. Yeah. I have a talent. Here but it is. that movie, it's really beautiful. The cinematography in it is amazing. Yeah. He goes to Iceland. It's just, it makes Iceland look like another place that I'm going to describe that is also very much like heaven on earth. Like it just looks incredible and like uh-huh. breathtaking. I'll say it. <laughs> breathtaking. Yeah. And um every single scene where he is traveling makes me want to travel. And it's about being in the moment and being in that place that you yeah. are in and like breathing in that air and noticing how it makes you feel. Like just it is incredible to watch. Yep. So Iceland. It's a good answer for the place. Nice. Hey. Um all right. Uh I'll do a couple now. One castaway. And this is the thing. I've never seen it. Castaway, oh, most of it takes place on one island. Mm-hmm. And it's a place in the in the Fiji Islands. Fiji's it's Modrika. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. But this is why I don't want to be stranded on an island Fair. by myself having to to survive. I approve. One thing is I would I would need an inhaler. Yes. <laughs> and I would need other medication. Yep. Um but it would be fun. It was a really pretty island to be fun to visit. But it also there's that part of me who's like, I wonder how well I could do is trying to survive on my own on an island. Like not I it's one of those things where it's like I don't want to be stranded on an island, but then it would be like if I could like have a But it's like if you have something to just say, Okay, come get me now, then that takes away some of it. But I'm like, I wonder how long I could I could do that without getting really sick or injured. Let's not find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, watching the movie I think I'm guessing most people when they were like, oh, what would I do in that situation? How long would I last? Things like that. Mm-hmm. I like that movie. It's good. You haven't seen it? No. It's a, it's a heavy movie, but it yeah. has humor too. We like <laughs> it. Um, and then I will go to another one I don't have much to say. Kill Bill Volume 1, towards the end, or at the end she goes to Tokyo. Oh, yeah. And there are parts of Tokyo, and there's part where she's riding around on a motorcycle. Sorry, it that was. was really creepy how I reacted Was she the motorcycle? It. She's in the... It's, uh, I, 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 if I was professional... Then I'd be getting paid, but if but also I'd be, I would have watched all these uh, for sure. But um, there's someone on a motorcycle and they're going around Tokyo at night, mm-hmm. and that, and then in addition to I have a, a friend who's been uh, nope, that was, he was in Hong Kong, but but I've seen pictures and videos of Tokyo, and mm-hmm. it just looks just amazing as yeah. just, just the tallest buildings as far as you can see just crazy lights and just a very different look for a metropolis going to asia would blow your mind and i think that going yeah. to japan would blow your mind because just the culture is so different immediately yeah and people just behave and carry themselves so differently and the fact that like having gum is against the law just having gum like on the street because like i'm I'm sure that the law is more specific than that but like it was meant for keeping streets clean and stuff like that and just walking through streets that are super clean yeah and just i swear descending in an airplane the clouds are different yeah (laughs) it's super crazy i want to see your face yeah i just want to travel let's go travel all right cool what else you got how many more on your list okay i have two more franchises cool. in the same place i have four more movies on my list i think I, i've somehow i've i've done it differently than you um you know go ahead and then we, we have like i think in about 12 minutes and i want to do quick trivia cool how about you do a couple more of yours okay um so i did kill bill uh om shanti om which i talked yes. about last week in india that makes me want to go to india mm-hmm. um Again, the but the, also the way the movie is shot, it's a lot of colors. Yeah, there's a lot of energy and there's sorrow, but there's a lot of just joy. It just feels like people are excited to be alive in mm. many ways. And it's one of those where there's from the few Bollywood movies I've seen, there's just enough. Just again, you see a peek into a different kind of culture, and it's like yeah. I want to go see what that's like to be there We're just, to experience just it. Seeing different styles of architecture, exactly is like yeah. enough to want to go see them in person. Yep. So Om Shanti Om for me did that. And then um, in Dumb and Dumber, they go to Aspen. <laughs> you even changed how you were sitting to say that. <laughs> yeah. In Dumb and Dumber, yeah, they go to Aspen, which it's, you know, snowing there mm-hmm. full time. And again, they're staying in really expensive places. Yeah. And skiing and stuff. But it just is that kind of 
oh, that feeling of just, well, because I'm not in the snow much, I I, I want to go to the, the snow more. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. But it just seems like nice and cozy and you yeah. put on a big jacket and the town, you can walk around and everything just looks like how it does in a, a Christmas book you read when you're a kid, things like that. <laughs> Yep. Nice. So that's my that's my answer for that. Cool. Uh, awesome. Do you want to do your two, and I'll do two, and then one and one. Sounds good. All right. Well, actually, my two are my last. But I meant like, do you want to do your number two, then my number two, then your number oh, one, then my yes, number yes, one? Yes. Okay. Unless your one and two are completely connected. They are completely connected. That's fine. You can do both. Then. Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Nice. New Zealand. Nice. Uh, looks, again, said it before. Heaven on earth. It just looks incredible, and. Everything that comes out of New Zealand is really interesting. Like a bunch of artists that come out of there, musical, comedic, acting, like Mm -hmm. directing. It's kind of like how when people follow British entertainment, they love British humor. Yeah. Um, People from New Zealand have a great sense of humor, as do Australians, as do people from anywhere else. But like I just, (laughs) Flight of the Concords like really made me love Uh New Zealanders. And then um, Lord of the Rings is just so gorgeous. And I I want to go to Middle Earth. Not to actually be there because that would be like being on a deserted oh, yeah. island. I would be done in like a second. <laughs> if I go on a hike, I'm like, how did Frodo make it to Mordor? Yeah. Oh, I'm so tired. They have your feet. Um, so I, they're, they're obviously there are lots of places in those movies where it's CG and it's not real. Like, like. Mordor and or like certain certain like the eye of Mordor is that what it's Sauron, Sauron? yeah mm-hmm. sorry there's certain things with like obviously that's not right. a real thing but when they do a lot of the shots of like faraway shots and walking on mountains and mountains and that's stuff, actually it's like most that's stuff that's is actually, actually there. no not most that's actually okay there. that's cool yeah no that's there they took them up in helicopters dumped them on top of a snowy oh, okay. mountain in New Zealand and one of the reasons why all of that stuff is actually in New Zealand is because Widow Workshop is in New Zealand. Right. And the director is from New Zealand. So they were bringing a lot of money and attention to the country. And um, so they really leaned into it. They were like, we've got it all. Everything's amazing. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, like there's the, sorry for my ignorance. What the, the elf place. There are many. (laughs) Hi, Ida. Hi, Ida. Uh, there's an elf like city that is. There are a bunch. Super shiny. <laughs> Rivendell. Rivendell, that's the one. Yeah. Um, do you know if if there, how much of if that was completely that was CG? It, CG or there's like places and they put stuff on it. You know what I mean? Like, do no, you think they found one, places that, that were? Oh, one, this looks like it could be where that thing is. That one was CG. Okay. I think that Alan Lee, who did the illustrations for that, um, sat in places and drew trees and drew things mm-hmm. but i think that pretty much everything there was cg okay and well except for like what they built but i think that what they built was probably like in a studio i've it, seen all the behind the scenes stuff right. but i've actually forgotten there's so much of it. um yeah. nerdy, I nerdy, nerdy. How, how where's uh tolkien from from england okay yeah so it is uh, new zealand in the books, is there any connection to New Zealand? No, New, it was shot in New Zealand. That because, that because of that because it of the director. It wasn't like that. Okay, and because they they looked around New Zealand and they said this is exactly right. what it could look like. Cool, nice. Yeah. So that, that was I'm your, a professional, and everything I've said is accurate. So not true. TM Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number two. It's gonna be maybe the last place you'd want to visit because of a movie. Do you want to guess? No. Well, maybe not the Blair Witch Project. Oh, God. The Woods. It's uh, Burkittsville is the town. And then the, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Seneca Creek State Park in Maryland. How's it spelled? Uh, S-E-N-E-C-A. Seneca. Thank you. Um, I always go the wrong way. Um, no, you don't. So the, the park is about 6,300 acres. Uh-huh. I don't know if you can camp there. I'm sure they're camp. I'm not sure. I'm sure the village, the M Night Shyamalan Shyamalan movie, yeah, took place there. Um, I could, uh, I'd be. It would be. I'm sure there are thousands of people and like teenagers and people in twenties that don't have the same thing. Let's go camp there. It's gonna be fun, and and it probably just annoys everyone who's over there. But yeah, that'd be fun. Because you wouldn't recognize specific places. Be like, oh, this the scariest movie ever 
hanging out in these woods would be uh, just knowing that that's where they filmed some of it would be uh, pretty creepy. Mm-hmm. And it worked pretty well. And there would be times I convinced myself that we'd never get out. Oh, God. And that then, sounds like a real bummer. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. It's kind of like going staying in a hotel room that's known to be haunted. It oh. would that the night there it might it might end up sucking, but uh, it seems like it could be totally fun. Yes. I wouldn't want to do it by myself. None of the stuff I'd want to do by myself. Mm-hmm. So that way you have to go with me. <laughs> no. um, yeah, and then my number one, hot fuzz. Yes, they go to the small a small town. I can't re- remember what the town is called. In the movie it's impossible impossible it to look Wall? up. Or something well, like Wells that? is the name of the, the actual town they, right. they filmed it um, in England, and they were looking for that kind of perfect picturesque, mm-hmm. just country innocent, village, yeah, British mm-hmm. village, and they just found it was perfect. And then, yeah. you know, maybe there's under there's something else behind <laughs> everyone's eyes. You know, there's something going on, and that I, I use this word already, but that just looks like the coziest town ever. We didn't go there because it was it's kind of far from. It would have taken. Parts, so. It would have taken a day. Yeah. So take um, a bus and go out there. And it probably is, you know, pretty small. But it seems like a place like it looks like you want to go. Like well, yeah, like uh, I keep going. If you want to take a vacation and write or draw or something like that, mm-hmm. that just seems like the perfect kind of place. Absolutely. For me, where you just. It has little. It has little pubs you go to. Mm-hmm. The British pubs are awesome. Like Is bars there? in the U.S., I just like. There's no charm. I don't care. I'm, there are some that are nice, but I, I see a bar or something in a movie. I go. Nah, I don't care. I see pubs in like any British, um, movies at all. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I want to go to that pub and hang out. I also feel like, pub culture, just is different than u.s bar culture yeah i mean at pubs people break out into fights and get stabbed just as much as like <laughs> yeah, anybody yeah. in a u.s bar but they're just the way that they're built yeah is built for people to come and drink comfortably yeah. and chat and talk about footy whereas like here it's like cowboys are coming in either on hogs or on horses and somebody's gonna get punched <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that we'll end our list with punched. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, let's go to all those places. Awesome. I'm Sounds down. Good. All right, cool. It's a deal. Oh, you don't want to go to Blair Ridge. Well, yeah, except for that one. Blair I'm not Ridge going place. there. No, thanks. I'll, uh, you can, I'll go in by myself. I guess it'll be fine. No. It's okay. Well, you'll have a long string. You hold on to one end. I'll hold That's on also not happening no. because then, no. All right. <laughs> um, are you ready for a little bit of trivia at the end? Uh oh. It was a good list. I I knew that you'd have some some uh Ireland and UK in there. I'm pretty predictable. But I, but, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was gross. Right um, in the microphone. I tried to I moved the microphone away too late. Uh are you ready for some trivia? Mm-hmm. So this is which one is it? Or this, that, or this? Awesome. I can't don't know what the name is. Okay. Stephen is it a Stephen King book, mm-hmm. a Nintendo game from Nintendo Entertainment System, so the NES, which came out eighty nine something like that. Nice, eighty seven, eighty five. What did remember. that look like? NES was the one where it's uh, the cartridge. Yeah, cartridge. You stick in the front, and it has the little door okay, closes. Cool. So I it's not Super Nintendo. It's the one you stick on top. I know that one. Um, or is it something I made up? Okay. So Stephen King book, NES game, or something I made up. Or Phil. Road work. NES. Stephen King. Bonanza. <laughs> Without a dollar. Without a dollar. Stephen King? That's what I made up. <laughs> um, Cycle of the Werewolf. Stephen King. Yep. Solomon's Keys. Stephen King. No, that's Nintendo game. Come on! Banana Prince. You. Nope, Nintendo. <laughs> Dream Sleepers. Stephen King. Nope. Some I made up. <laughs> he had Dream Catcher, I think. Yeah, it was. he did. Um Dream Catchers. Uh The Eyes of the Dragon. NES. Stephen King. What? Yeah. Uh Maniac Mansion. <laughs> NES? Yep. <laughs> uh The Regulators. Stephen King. Yep. Do you know that one? Yeah. Alright, nice. I didn't. Uh Twin Eagle. You. NES. Mm. Um, 
Darkness in the Shadows. What? You. Yep. <laughs> uh, Bag of Bones. Stephen King. Yeah, good job. Do you know that one? I've there. I've never... I haven't read a Stephen King novel all the way through, but there was a huge, because he's so prolific, there was a huge yeah. section in the library that I grew up in. So I recognize, I can like picture the cover right. of that edition. There are, I was surprised by how many Stephen King books I've heard of. Oh, um, nice. Four more. So wait, I just said Bag of Bones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have Twin Eagle on there twice. Okay, so there are three more. <laughs> Dr. Sleep. Hmm, Dr. Sleep. Stephen King? Yep, good job. <laughs> Finders Keepers. Uh-oh. Finders Stephen Keepers. Stephen King. It is Stephen King. <laughs> Last one. Cyberball. Oh, my God. Uh, NES. Yeah. Hey! Good job. You, you, the last half, you you really did well. You <laughs> did well at the beginning, too, but last half. That's very generous of you to say. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna open up for a second. We have cold minutes. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, this show is, is really fun. Um, one of my goals I've been doing I've been doing it for a few months. One of my goals is to uh try to get people like people that I maybe i don't know or other mm-hmm. people i don't know well to come on and be guests and i thought oh i have really bad social anxiety so that could help um me get people to come on the show mm-hmm. and but then it it is still really difficult to uh to know and ask people especially it's a show that a lot of people aren't most people aren't aware of they don't mm-hmm. so it's like sometimes describing the premise of the show people go like you just go you just make a list or something like they, I, I think they don't really see why what's the point maybe there are people listen to it and make the same thing but um so if you if you know anyone who wants to be a guest if you're around Petluma or if you want to be a guest or something as long as you uh you know you don't want to just come on here and say a bunch of horrible racist sexist stuff then uh let me know um so you can email us uh you know phil and ariel at gmail tweet us phil and ariel even though it's the Ariel, uh, that that's for this show also. Ariel's a big part of this show, obviously. Um, uh, so yeah, I just wanted, I might as well just say it. Yeah, I thought yeah. I I, thought I wanted to make it at first be like I didn't want to seem desperate, and I'm not desperate because no. I, I have I have family and friends that I, that I no, do but the I show think with. it's I think it's like our other show where when we first came up with it, we wanted to be able to shine a light on local music mm-hmm. um, using radio when we don't usually hear radio do that anymore and um and now you're doing that with this yeah where you want to kind of open it up yeah now that you've established it um and it's yeah it's tough for me just out of the blue to just talk to someone i haven't met or don't know more well about this 100 percent. yeah <laughs> the worst yeah and there are amazing people out there you're probably listening and if you're listening yeah. you're pretty awesome yeah but it's really hard to talk to people you don't know yep you have to be like right in the right mood because we're both very, um, what's the word for it? Introverted. Introverted. Yeah. And like, I can be an extroverted introvert, but we are very introverted people. Yeah. And so, yeah, this, I thought because it's structured, it makes it a little easier to, mm-hmm. to talk to people. And I haven't had anyone on the show yet that, that I was like nervous to talk to or anything like that. Yeah. Obviously it's all been friends and family, but, uh. But I, I would like to uh, try to open it up more. Awesome. So, yeah, please let me know. Please uh, let let everyone know about the show. We appreciate it. We want it to be fun, um, obviously. <laughs> we want this to be good. <laughs> thank you for your uh, support and your listening. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so stick around. Uh, the Vander Mix is coming up, I think, in a, just a minute. And I will uh, be talking to you guys next week. And I'll see you next Thursday. Sounds good. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.